Hey everybody, it's me, Uncle Greg, a.k.a. The Free American Spirit. Today, we're going to interrupt the boat build series. Not really interrupting it, but just skip ahead a little bit to tell you about the batteries I got. So they came in today, and we're going to unbox them and show you what they are. Now, I haven't decided if I'm going 12 volt or going 24 volt, so I got two 12 volt batteries. And the reason for that was just economically, I always like to have a spare so I got these at a good price. I'll have a link to them later. They're two 12 volt batteries, so I can either put them in series and go 24 volts and then buy two more later as backups, or I can just get a 12 volt trolling motor and put an AB switch and use either or. So, hey, let's get to unpacking them. We'll be right back. But I've already cut the tops of these just to show you how they're packed. So they arrived probably within four days from when I called the company um, and ordered them up. I used, I believe, PayPal to, to pay them. They take credit cards, whatever. Will Prowse did a, a series on some batteries called um, Roy Pal. And this is one of the batteries that's made by the same factory. I called Roy Powell. They recommended these. They said they're made by the same, and I bought them through them. So I'll have links to that later. I don't have the money like Will Prowse does, and I don't get free batteries in order to rip them all apart and show you. So go watch that video, but I'll discuss a little bit why, what I think about that video. So opening them up, they're double boxed, which is nice. There was two little dehydration pads or whatever you call them right there. I don't know what that's for. You got foam all the way around and on top you got I guess a little user's guide oh look at that that's a nice user's guide there I had to read through that and these are the power Eurus 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium ion batteries okay and we're gonna go through all the specs here in a minute but that's a nice little user guide then of course it's in a bag so let me pull this out and we will go through it a little bit. Bear with me. Okay, I've got the batteries out of the box. One's in the boat where it's going to sit. But I don't want to show you that because that will uh, be a spoiler alert on how how the uh, boat is coming along. So you have to wait for those videos. But anyways, I don't have a charger right at the moment. And you can charge up to 50 amps, you know, on this battery. So 50 amps continuous charge not over 14.6 volts so you want to get a battery charger that's made for lithium ion ions at 14.6 volts i don't know if you'll be able to see this on the thing let's see can i lean on one and show the meter at the same time ah it went off what do you know and we'll select it again ac dc and we'll see what this does but the point that I was going to make here is, can you see the charger? Maybe, maybe not. That's 12.75. I believe the other battery I looked is 12.89. So they're out of balance. So you do want to balance these if you're going to use two in parallel or two in series. And they need to be like 0.1 volt to each other in balance. And then theoretically, once they're connected together you know they should run down all nice and evenly because of the BMS inside now when you charge these you know there's a kind of debate I asked the I asked the uh, manufacturer today hey, when I charge these if they're both in parallel can I use one charger <clears throat> he said it's best to charge each battery battery separately you know I don't know what a BMS in there why that would be but you know i'm not a technical guru like will prouse and all those guys so you know i'm just giving you the information and speaking about charging these batteries or hooking them up when i put these in i will have an ab switch and so i will have leads coming off each battery if i hook them in 12 volt and i can just turn that switch off and then i can use two little chargers or a charger with two banks to charge them separately like they suggest even though you may be able to charge them both together I'm just gonna do what the company tells me to do you know and then if it's in series in the 24 volts I would have to use a different charger so I won't know yet until I get 
my trolling motor and decide whether I'm going 12 or 24 volts. But when I do, I'll show you what chargers I got. So just a little bit of specs on this. The charging voltage is 14.6 volts, which I told you. Current charging, you know, you can have up to 50 amps. Discharging is 100 amps, continuous. And then max discharge is 280 amps for about 5 seconds. Now, Will Prowse, that video I was telling you about, did note a couple things in here. Uh, one was the build quality. Of course, he took it apart and looked at it, which he said was excellent. And then the other was, you know, the the test on how long it would go. The, I can't think of the name right now, but put it to the challenge, you know, and capacity test. And it passed with flying colors. Now, later, I'll have another video coming out where I'll actually have the trolling motor hooked up, and I'll just let it run on one battery until it's dead and then I'll do that again and see how long at full speed a 12 volt or a 24 volt depending how I hook them up well you know these batteries will run <clears throat> so that will be quite interesting there's an app available for this from Roy Powell if you download that to your phone which I haven't done yet these are Bluetooth it should send a signal to your phone and you can monitor the batteries while you're in the boat or whatever so I went home and I am I put the app on my phone, which we're going to see here in just a second. It's called the Roy Pal Fish app. But you can see this battery is 12.98, almost 13 amps. So this battery has a number on it, 0027. The battery behind me is only 12.7 amps, something like that. And it has a different number. So if I go to this fish app on my phone, it'll pop up. And so it is showing, which one are we on? 027, almost, it's showing 13 volts, so it was 12.98 or 12.99, so that's really close. Now to get to the other battery, if I go up here to this little Bluetooth, it'll show, hey, it's showing my camera. Still looking for stuff, so sometimes I gotta move away from the other battery to see if my other battery will pop up. Let me just shut it off and reopen it. Roy Pal Fish. That's the 027, the one we just did. And now let's see if it finds the other one. There it is, 0063. If I'm really, really close to the battery and I'm switching around, sometimes it gets confused. There it is. So if you look at the other one, I told you it was 12.7, I think. We're going to skip that. And there it is, 12.7. So it kind of rounds it either up or down, I guess right to the however close it is so that's kind of kind of really cool 12.99 went to 13 on this battery here so that's very cool that that works on the budget battery like i said i'll have a link to this battery you know i'm going to try to get an affiliate link but i have one to amazon as well i believe at the time that this was made they were around 450 if i get a link they might give me a discount for you um or maybe they won't but you know, that's a pretty good deal on a 100 amp hour battery. And now you're getting close to a price of what a 12 amp deep cycle, really good battery would run you anyways. You know, if you got a, a name brand one like Lion or something. But, you know, anywho, um, to me, that's well worth it. I'm going to get more charges. I'm going to be able to have, you know, probably 25% more usage out of it on each battery. But getting back to Will Prowse's videos, a couple things that he noticed. On the build quality that was excellent, there was a lot of foam around this battery. And what he did not like about this battery was that foam actually went into, there's a big heat sink on one side, and that, that foam went into the little slots on the heat sink. Now, I get you want this maximum air current, but these batteries are sealed batteries. Uh, they're, what is it? something 65 which which means basically you could pour water all over these batteries and you're not going to get water in them you know you can't submerge them because of the connections but they're made for marine use that designation so you know there's not a whole lot of airflow going around that inside that battery to begin with but it does have some convection Stuff. So, you know, I guess if you were using this for something other than light trolling motor use and things like that, that's really not going to, you know, draw huge amps off this thing. 
that could become a concern but I don't think it's going to be a big concern anything so that's one little downside you can watch that video another thing was he was talking about the hot and cold leads on here the safety leads now there's four of them two of them go to the post which he didn't really like he's like why why aren't they in between the batteries like normally so that's the high temperature cutoff that goes between two to the post then there's a high temperature that goes down to the batteries and then there's a low temperature charging cutoff to make sure inside the battery so that was fine but in my view I think they put them up here because you're in a boat these are like I said sealed batteries for water extra foam to help for vibration which you're in a boat okay not so much like in an RV or something I mean they'll jostle a little in an RV but not like in a boat so I think that's done purposely because if these comes loose and start arcing or something and they start heating up those terminals it's going to shut the battery down that's my opinion I haven't called the factory to confirm that once again I'm not an electrical guru engineer but you can you know maybe ask Will Prowse on his channels if that makes sense um, I would like to see two temperature cutoffs but here again I live in Florida so you know I very seldom get so much freezing and to be quite honest with you if it's that cold I'm not fishing and I'm not charging my batteries anyways maybe if I was in an RV that would be a concern I'm using it year-round so that's up to you you know because it only has one cutoff for the cold I just don't see that being a problem but I just wanted to let you know that's what Will found and you know that may be a concern to people way up north to use their boat and want to charge in the middle of winter you know if you're inside a garage or something like that it's not going to matter it has to get below 32 for that cutoff to shut off so there's that you know the manufacturers of these batteries tell you you know if you're going to leave them in your boat or something like that for a month that's fine but you should really top them off every once in a while the full 14.6 volts you know get them up there and then you if you're going to stay more in a month you need to bring them inside you know and this manual goes through all kinds of little specs for you it's well written in several languages um, that's a little battery charger that they sell it's only three amps so that would take too long but they have a 50 amp one I believe but they're expensive but if you look at this this little manual here everything is laid out for you real nice nominal output voltage 2.8 volts nominal capacity 100 amps hours actual capacity plus or minus 100 amp hours internal resistance 20 ohm plus or minus charging 14.6 volts you know max capacity 14.6 volts discharge cutoff 9.2 volts in other words the battery's going to shut down when it gets down to 9.2 self discharging rate 3 percent plus or minus of 25 degrees celsius Continuous charge current 50 amps continuous discharge 100 amps Charging protection plus or minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit Okay down to 9 degrees Fahrenheit is that what that says? So let's see what else we got here operating temperature 32 degrees to 122 degrees Fahrenheit You know people are going to push that a little bit discharge Temperatures 14 to 167 degrees Fahrenheit Wow okay and let's see your storage temperature one month that's what I was talking about if you're gonna store them you want them between negative 4 degrees and 113 degrees they'll be fine if you're gonna do a year it's negative 4 degrees to 77 degrees Fahrenheit so you don't want to leave them in the heat for a long long time other odds and end things you know, we're using it for a trolling motor, like I said, and this just shows you all the rest of the things you can use it for. Uh, they suggest charging the battery <clears throat> to the regular voltage of 12.8 volts to 13.24 volts, you know, to avoid over discharge when you're storing them. And then you got the wiring diagram for putting them in series, so you can get up to four batteries in series for a 48 volt. You can put them in parallel like this. By the way, that shows a ground going down to a ground on a boat. You never want to ground to the boat, at least the aluminum boat. Um, and then you got series in parallel, so I believe you can go up to four batteries. So if I wanted to, I could either have four 12 volt batteries in parallel.
for four batteries and two sets of series and then parallel together for 24 volts or three batteries for 36 volt in series or four batteries for 48 volts in series. That's the initial look of this battery. Like I said, I've got two of them. We will do more tests on them. Everything I've heard about these, as far as the capacity test from Will, was really good. The build quality is great. You know, like I said, if I had the money, I would pull it apart and look at it. All this spare aluminum over here that I saved, which is good, because out of that junk pile, I've got that, that piece right there that i got to clean up. I'll bend that up, and I'll clean that up. And I will use that little piece, maybe. And we'll clean it up, paint it up, and rivet it up, and make a nice little battery tray out of it. That makes it quick work. Get the little grinder out. We cut those rivets off of this piece, and then cut that piece to fit. Drilled a couple holes. Now we're going to rivet this together. When I'm done, we'll just take our sanding wheel or whatever, and Hit that real lightly, get all that junk off, and put a light coat of paint on it for the battery tray. And then we'll put it in the boat. It's looking good. Got the tray all painted up. Put the batteries next to it to make sure they'd fit, which they will. Just notice that this thing is on one battery. I don't know what that is. But it's not on the other battery. I know that's a little older case or whatever. All the stickers and everything else looks exactly the same so I'll have to ask them and I'll let you know when we do the battery test but that thing is ready to go in the in the boat I just got to drill some holes screw it in and then once I get the batteries in place I'll put two eye hooks to strap the batteries down really really good but I'll show that later in the video when we test it out and I show you the wiring all right, guys, hope you liked the video. Thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon to see more videos like this, and use those links, especially these battery links on Amazon. You might get a little discount, and it helps me make a little money. See you later. Bye.